Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at a, a visual and intuitive way of understanding the quadratic inequalities. So this quadratic inequality says, basically, when is our quadratic bigger than zero? When is it positive? So one approach you've taken in the video is to, to in the video so far, is to factor out, right? You get x plus 3 and then x minus 2. And you're looking to find when this is bigger than zero. We talked about that that can only happen if your first term and second term are, are both positive. So x plus 3 would be bigger than 0 and x minus 2 would be bigger than 0, where x is bigger than 2, right, solving, and, and x is bigger than negative 3. We can combine these two and say that, well, x is bigger than negative 3 and it's bigger than 2, right, only when x is bigger than 2. Right, it's bigger than both both of those groups at the same time if x is bigger than 2. So we combine these two inequalities into one right here. So basically when x is bigger than 2. But then we also looked at, well, if you take one term that's negative times another, that'll also be bigger than 0 or positive. So we go through the same process, right? x plus 3 is now less than 0, it's negative, and x minus 2 is also less than zero. So this time they're, they're both end, of course, and in, in this one ends as well. In this case, they're both less than zero, and if I solve for x, I get x is less than negative three, and x is less than two. So when is x less than negative three and less than negative, and less than two? Well, when x is less than negative three. We can combine these two. And then you're, you're done, you've answered this quadratic inequality. But actually, you know, visually, this is actually, I think, quite intuitive and easy to deal with. So if I set up my, my, my axes here, here's my y axis and my x axis, right? What are we really doing here? Well, let's set this up. When you're finding, you know, this quadratic inequality and you're solving for it, you can think of for a moment if it was an equality, if we had, um, let's say, x squared plus x minus 6 equals 0. If you were to factor this out into x plus 3 and x minus 2, right, that equals 0, and then solve, you get x is equal to negative 3 and x is equal to 2, what does that mean? Well, those are the roots of our quadratic. So if we were to plot this quadratic, right, I know if x is 0 and I plug it in here, I find the y-intercept, and that's negative 6. Here's negative 6, right, 0 plus 0 minus 6 is negative 6. That's our, that's our y value here, because, of course, in general, this quadratic is really saying y equals x squared plus x minus 6. So if, if x is 0, you plug it in here, y equals negative 6. So one of the points in the quadratic is right here. But these are our roots. It's where it crosses the x-axis, right? So x is equal to negative 3 and 2. So here's negative 3 and 2. And just a rough sketch of the quadratic, right? We're going to kind of branch out here. It's a good turn. Okay, so that's our quadratic Right? That's our, that line represents when y equals x squared plus x minus 6. But we're not finding that. We're finding when x squared plus x minus 6 is bigger than 0, when it's positive. If we look at the picture, right, that's when our line here, when our, when our quadratic is actually above 0. So that's anything above, right? here, and it's positive. These are all positive values on our quadratic. And that only happens when, and you can see it right here, you can shade it in, let me fix my pen a little bit. Right, it happens right here. Oops, that, that's ridiculous, let me fix that. It happens right here, and here. Those, those two spots on the graph. So what does this, what does this all mean? Well, this, of course, is when x is bigger than 2. Fix the pen here, sorry. When x is bigger than 2. And here, everything this way is when x is less than negative 3. 
because that's when our graph is actually positive. It's when it's above zero. And that's our answers right here, isn't it? X is bigger than two, and X is less than negative three. So you can see in the picture what this represents is when your graph is actually positive, when it's above X equals zero. And you can, if I, if I flip this question around, I said, well, okay, when is it less than zero? When is it negative? Instead of even doing all this factoring, and we could do it, we could see the answer though. It's right here. It's in this interval, right? This yellow part right here. On that, on that part of the graph, right? What is that? Well, that's when our quadratic is negative, or when it's less than zero. So, or when the y values are less than zero, right? Just to be clear, not mixing up my words here. You know, you're you're really looking at the y values on the quadratic. So when you're saying it's positive, all the y values above zero on the y-axis are positive and below are negative. So on our graph here, this yellow interval is when the y values are negative. And that's when x is, well, it's less than 2, and x is greater than negative 3. It's that interval right there. And you can see it. And when is our, our quadratic, when the y, one of the y values positive? Well, like we said before, when x is bigger than 2 and when x is less than negative 3. So you can see that there's a visual connection here on the, there's a visual connection here to quadratic inequalities. And we could, you know, we could reverse a couple of things and play with this. And, whoops, I ran out of that. Let me fix this. What if I set it up this way and I said, okay, set my axes up again. This time, let's set the top of the graph, not at negative six, but at positive six. And let's keep our intercepts here, our x-intercepts, our roots, essentially the same. So here x equals negative three and two. So now we'll get a quadratic that's different from before, right? It's upside down. Now, and if I just sketch this other, this is the one from before, negative six. You can see that they're opposite of each other. So now, what does that mean about this, this green quadratic? Well, if the quadratic we had before, right, the one we just showed, was something like y equals, right, x squared plus x minus 6, right, and we factored that out into x plus, well, let me write it just like I did, x minus 2 and x plus 3, Right, those are our roots there, because if we redistribute this, it would be x squared plus 3x minus 2x minus 6. That does equal this. Well, now we have something that's almost the opposite. So you can tell intuitively, and this is where you start to grow the intuition, that y doesn't equal x squared plus x minus 6, but negative x squared minus x plus 6. What did I do there? Well, I multiplied everything by negative 1. Multiply by negative 1 on the right side, right? Basically, the inverse of everything here. You know, you can see what's happening in this picture. Because now, this, you know, this inequality, if I still look at it, if I say, when is it positive? When is this, when is y, bigger than 0? Well, it's in this interval right here, right? It's when, in this case, x is bigger than negative 3 and x is less than 2. And then I can say, oh, well, when's y less than 0? Well, this is when you get those disjunctions here, one or the other. You can see in the picture. And this part over here or here, right, our y values will be negative. So that's when x is less than negative 3, right, anything less than negative 3. Or, and that's the key, because it can't be less than negative 3 and bigger than 2 at the same time, but it can be one or the other. In those cases, right, the y values of your quadratic will be negative. So you can kind of work backwards from the pictures as well and ask questions about these quadratics. But I just wanted to get some sense that there, that there is a picture for this whole process. It's not just a random arbitrary process. When you're solving for a quadratic inequality, you're finding when is that quadratic? actually positive, one of the y values positive, right? The positive, above when y equals zero, or when are they negative? Below when y equals zero. 
One last thing to take from all of this is that if you're solving a quadratic or quadratic inequality, let's say we change this so it says, okay, one is x squared, negative x squared, minus x plus 6. When is it bigger than 0? Well, a technique you might use, and one we've talked about, is to get rid of this negative sign here, divide everything in the term by negative 1. So then we get x squared plus x, all right, everything's just reversing, minus 6, and then we invert the sign here, and now we deal with this right here, because this is exactly like our red term up here, right, this one right here. They're identical. So we can factor it out, just like we did here, and then solve when this is less than 0. And that will, in fact, give us the answers to this. When our original right, quadratic is bigger than 0. And let me just color code this in a way here. So this is going to be our green line, and this is going to represent our red line. I want to talk about why this works. Well, how come when you invert everything, including the signs we talked about, why does it actually give you the solution? Why is this red right, graph and green graph, how are they connected to each other? Well, if we look at this red graph, right, here, the original, and you're trying to solve when is, when is our quadratic less than zero in this original graph. Well, that's this interval right here, right, on the red graph, from here to here, let me use a, a better, oops, fix this, sorry. I think this will be a better color. Right, right here on the red graph is when x, our quadratic, is less than 0. But look how it matches the green graph. In that same chunk of space right there, our green graph is greater than 0. Right, the quadratic is greater. So when we, our original green graph here, had a negative coefficient. So what we did to solve it was we basically looked at the reverse quadratic, this red one right here and said, well, when that red quadratic is less than zero, in this purple area right here, it's the same as when the green quadratic is above zero. They're inverses of each other. And in fact, if we, if we also looked at when is this, our red, excuse me, our green quadratic, when is it actually less than zero, right? Well, it's here and here. Right? But if you're given something like negative x squared minus x plus 6 is less than 0, to solve it, you would multiply or divide everything by negative 1 and get x squared plus x minus 6 is bigger than 0. So in fact, you're solving for this quadratic when it's larger than 0. And you can see in the picture that this original red graph, right here and here, when it's above 0, it's when our green graph now color-coded here, is less than 0. So to solve this, multiply everything by negative 1, look at that graph, and realize that, okay, when this red graph here is bigger than 0, its inverse must be less than 0. It's the same exact intervals. And that might give you some insight into what's happening. So I hope this helped.